All right, everybody. Um, we are going to get started with the closing track so that we can send you off to our happy hour imminently. Um, so thank you all so much. Hopefully we have all of our track leads in the room um, to give us our recaps in the closing track. So that's what we're gonna start with. If you're a, a track lead, if you can come up here so that you can present your, your track updates, that'd be great. Just there's stairs so you don't have to trip on anything. Um, head this way. Someone find Stefan because he's first. Stefan! Perfect. Come on up here. Um, and we're going to jump into it. We're going to do a quick recap with all of our wonderful track leads. We're going to retro briefly as a group. So get out your phones because I'm going to ask you to type in some things on a Google Doc. We're going to say thank you to all of the wonderful people that have made this possible so far. We're not over. We have lots of workshop time tomorrow, but um, this is our day with all of our AV friends, all of the people who have been managing the downstairs. Tomorrow we're going to be upstairs on the seventh floor. Um, and so it's going to be a little bit more hacker time, DIY, run your own on comps. Um, so still really great to say thank you to um, all the people who've made this possible. And then goodbye, and then we'll walk over to Delirium together and have some beer. It'll be great. Um, so first, I want to reflect on what a fantastic summit. Everyone was so well dressed. There were so many good conversations. Yeah, round of applause. I think our group photo turned out fantastically. Um, definitely a, a Phil Dev Summit for the books um, and, and some really awesome swag that is waffle-tastic to boot. Um, so thank you guys all so much for making it great so far. Um, we're gonna now invite our track leads up and we're gonna do our track recaps from Tuesday, Wednesday so that we can focus, focus, focus on workshops and unconf tomorrow. And there's a lot of things that have come from our track recaps and are flowing into that day. So hopefully that's gonna be a, a useful chunk of time as well. So I'll start with Stefan. All right. Okay, it was a packed day. Um, we had more than uh, 12 sessions. Uh, we started off with a panel session um, discussing Venice AI, a new project, uh, to demonstrate how important it is to have an open source chat GPT. So the goal of the session initially was to demonstrate through real use cases how users are using decentralized infrastructure, specifically compute and storage. And so Jensen, Akash, Swan, Titan Networks all showed different use cases going from um, apps that are using decentralized compute to crawl the web for data sources. So really the, in, the input, the data sources that are used in for the LLMs and for the data, um, the new um, workloads that are really um, driving decentralized AI and AI in general. We saw aggregation services using decentralized compute and universities, local governments, and also gaming. Now, why is this all important? Because obviously we want decentralized storage to be plugged into these workloads and Falcon to become the standard uh, storage target of choice for all of these new use cases. So what's next? One thing that we, <clears throat> in the previous dev, Phil Dev Summit, because I always like to compare, um, we were not talking about decentralized training yet. So Jensen specifically highlighted that they're building a way for um, not only confidential uh, compu computing, but also to be able to decentralize your uh, training, uh, model training, and for, their, uh, for that storage will be required as well. And then last but not least, we talked, there were multiple sessions on the need for um, integration with smart agents. So smart agents will become the future users of decentralized infrastructure and almost the main users of decentralized infrastructure. So what are the learnings? Um, out of all these conversations to kind of collect it, what are the, the main takeaways? One, users want more holistic offerings, meaning it's not about just compute. It's not about just storage. They want compute plus storage, which is great for all of us. So we need to integrate at uh, with all these different stacks. Two, AI researchers spend more than 8% in data acquisition and prep. So the data prep needs to be re-innovated. And that's where hashes uh, come, in very, come, very, come in very handy because then you can keep tracking them through content addressable indexing. And again, guess what? That's where Falcon is a perfect storage target, but we need not only cold, we don't need only fast, we need fast and cold. So one of the things that came back recurrently was we need fast storage now, right? And not only that, we need faster and easier APIs across these stacks to be able to ingest data, let's say, through one compute stack and then use it through another compute stack. There needs to be some level of uh, standard format. And I know that um, our friend Nicola has also had a session, which I missed, unfortunately. I know my one minute is now going to five minutes, but I think it's really interesting content. So uh, they need localized data lakes uh, closer uh, deployed to the compute. So that was the other thing. Um, and then very specifically, need for hot storage with SDK to read offset byte ranges so that we can um, read data um, from a, from a very specific location in a file. 
Not only that, there was a discussion on what use cases should we focus on. One in particular that came back was Spark workloads, um, to, so we can demonstrate to the Web2 community that right now you can actually enable um, your Spark workloads on a decentralized infrastructure stack. What are the needs? Again, summarized SDK, APIs, hot storage, as Hannah kind of listed them all out. And again, I highlighted one in particular, which is built reference architectures for ELT rack workloads. Um, which keeps coming up. Actually, I tweeted uh, Fluence when he was presenting his workload, and he already got like a few outreaches just from that tweet. Hey, from a Web2 users that, hey, I didn't know this was feasible and you were doing RAG workload. So message here too is that we should talk also to the Web2 community in their language. Awesome. Magic. Tell us about the welcome to Filecoin. Uh, yeah, we, we basically talked about everything that's going on in the, at the foundation of the network. So yeah, we care about a lot of news in the Philos, in Curio, in the forest. Uh, we, we heard from Akave the, the story of how it came to be. Uh, there was a lot of conversations in the Builder Funnel talk, which was 20 minutes, but actually 50. Uh, and then, yeah, Secret Finance and Station showed what they're doing, uh, it's all really great. And then we also heard about what it is to run Fuel Plus allocators. Uh, so yeah, learnings. Uh, for us, is really cool. Use it. Um, Curio, Curio also exists. And, and if you're on SP, talk to Curio, please. Uh, then yeah, builder funnels. Uh, build, build, funding builders is hard, apparently. Who knew? Uh, and, and yeah, Fuel Plus also still hard. But, but if you want to be an allocator, you can apply and, and the just, just ongoing applications apparently. I, I didn't know that. And and yeah, you you can build automated allocators and, and get them running in probably a week or two. Uh yeah, also station has many users. That's that's very cool. And and secured finance exists and you can play with it. So um on yeah. On, on a VM. It's it's good. Um yeah, uh so next steps. Uh yeah, as I said, uh, if you're on SP, try Curio. Uh, we, we should keep talking about funding builders. It's a good thing. It will probably be more conversations tomorrow. Um, yeah, if you are running a node already, try running for us, because it's a light that you will probably not even notice. Uh, then, yeah, if you have a computer, you can run station. Uh, if, if you have a dipping project, also maybe talk to station. It, it might support it. And you might get a lot more computers on it, and Station Pay would be very happy. Um, yeah, if you if you're into DeFi, check out Secure Finance, and and yeah, uh, it, it, the same things like Fuel Plus Allocator apply. Uh, and and if you have hot storage needs, Akave might have answers. Woohoo! All right, security and compliance, Ken. All right, uh, we had a, a pretty successful first security track here. Um, we talked about the bug bounty program. We talked about um, creating the holistic method of measuring security in projects and organizations. You know, the whole theme was going beyond audits, but within that and, and with the, the criticism of just audits as a badge, we still talked about how to find good auditors, how to, how to approach those as new projects, what the expectations there were. Uh, in the second uh, portion of, of what we were doing, we, we really focused on tooling available, uh, again, beyond auditing and beyond bug bounty. So uh, Antithesis came forward and uh, was talking about continuous testing and fuzzing of, of projects and what that can do for, for projects in terms of operating in the green, both from a security and performance perspective. Uh, we talked about the importance of secure design and threat modeling. Uh, we talked about all of the lessons that we learned through uh, incidents and incident response over the years with, with Jenny. Uh, um, and uh, have, have successfully renamed uh, the Incident Response Working Group to the Cat Herding Gang. Um, we talked about NASA failures and how we can learn from, from that uh, in the space flight with, with Daniel. Uh, very entertaining stories there, so if you missed them, please go watch the videos. Uh, we talked about data protection and not legal advice with Kurt, um, just uh, talking about what to expect in terms of data protection uh, for storage providers and the general ecosystem. Uh, we gave advice on prepping for audits with Michael, and um, we investigated uh, some new tooling that allows us to, to run queries on smart contracts, which we're uh, collaborating with uh, Glider. 
Uh, so the track learnings here were the maturity model is uh, there's interest in it from storage providers as a way to bridge the gap between uh, enterprise questions and Web3 and Filecoin specifically. So that will grow uh, as we open that up for uh, um, an RFC in terms of whether that is going to be useful. Uh, Mosea um, and Cyril were talking about uh, just really reducing the friction that we have in finding auditors for projects, uh, leveraging LLM for, for that, uh, that will help to find auditors that match price and methodology. Uh, we learned that bug bounties are really difficult and really hard. Everyone has issues with them, so that's why Filecoin Foundation is really trying to extend the existing bug bounty program to more projects, and we, we are committed to doing that. Um, SPs want help with the enterprise security bridge. We, are, uh, we hear that, and um, that is part of what that maturity model is, is, is focused on. Uh, continuous testing can make developers happy, even though it's a lot of upfront work. Um, but we've seen some, um, some sh we've showcased some of that in those uh, in those sessions. Uh, do threat modeling, do secure design. Uh, NASA gets I, uh, incident response wrong too. We can learn from NASA. You know they do big things as well. Uh, and next step. So Falcon Foundation, you know, we're on the hook to connect with uh, cert, um, storage providers on getting those better security guidelines. We'll launch the request for comments on that maturity model this week. Uh, we'll also extend the bug bounty program uh, based on the feedback that we received. Uh, and the uh, project can take advantage of continuous testing through uh, Antithesis. We're working on a relationship with, with that as as well. Um, and then we will also be working on Glider for FEM support. Right now, they do support Ethereum mainnet and are supporting other uh, Ethereum-based uh, um, VMs. But So we will work on that support so that we can also take advantage of that. And then we had a really, really great incident response session in terms of generating security thresholds that we can effectively respond to incidents and events on the network. So we're work closely with Zondax. We, that, that session was super helpful in, in uh, establishing what our workload is going to be moving forward. That's it. Awesome. Um, Orion, Falcon Protocol Evolution. I'm going to do the TLDR here and take a recap and takeaways in the same slide. Uh, so we did have some very good uh, directional talks about Falcon Web Services. Uh, let's make Falcon the network of references for cloud services. Um, we do have similar protocol structures in the network. So let's make templates to make it easy to deploy Spark, Retrieve, FHA, LLMs, CK, optimistic services to Falcon. Uh, Storage is bringing hot storage to the Falcon network, utilizing PDP. Uh, so coming soon, you can expect that hot copies will be everywhere. We have incentivized retrieval, L2 coordination, and PDP and PoWrap together. Uh, then fast finality is coming in NV23, and we're targeting NV24 for full deployment. It will make uh, finality 450 times faster. Finality is actually finality here. Uh, then we had Spark talk about improving the retrieval success rate of public data. Uh, then we had some good open discussions and brainstorming on on-chain incentives. It's really hard, uh, but maybe we can run incentivized subnets or testnets for experimenting with these incentives. Then we talked about uh, FIP discussions around Falcon tokenomics and inflation. We clearly have a communication gap in tokenomics and the inflation story. So, what are the next steps? Uh, Forest and Lotus will also map out and finalize the common node methods that we have. Uh, there's a whiteboard session on Falcon Web Services happening tomorrow, 10 to 12. So, Stefan, join that one. Um, maybe we should investigate the incentivized subnets, testnets for running, running on-chain experiments, and maybe someone can build Falcon Trueflation.io. All right, Sarah, you're up on empowering developers. Okay, um, I'm already so tall. All right, um, so empowering developers, some track recaps in a minute. Um, we have an incoming wave of hot storage services coming to Falcoin. Um, there's Basin, there's Storacha, and um, of course, Arcave coming to the network too. Um, 
there has been a lot of common trends there. We've identified over the past year of feedback, which is hot storage leading into cold storage for archiving. Um, Flow AI is looking to AI that can onboard new users to Filecoin, so that MVP should ship next week, according to them, um, which is really exciting. Um, we have Fox Wallet that shipped the first Filecoin NFT management in Wallet. Didn't even know that until yesterday, which is great. Um, Barracks Block Explorer is also shipping token discovery in a few months, so that was much needed, um, so that'll be really exciting. And Protofire shipped a cool IPC subnet wizard, uh, with a GUI that is really awesome to look at, and it's called Genesis Art. So if anyone wants to check that out, that is really, really cool. Um, track learnings and takeaways. So we had some pretty good discussions in this track. Um, of course, we had a lot of people from outside of the Falcon ecosystem coming in, which was really interesting to get new perspectives on. Um, TLDR, builders want to see Falcon storage exported to other chains, but they strongly prefer interfaces that are familiar to their chain. Um, so how can we make it look more familiar to them? Um, data provenance and traceability are key asks from clients and users, and the ability to delete data permanently. Um, so these are some considerations coming from users. Uh, most users prioritize the ability to store and retrieve data reliably, um, and by Web2 usability standards, um, and, less, and care less that storage is actually decentralized. So progressive decentralization of storage is something that we can really think about. Um, there needs to be better visibility of data management from upload to storage. Um, can there be standards to give rise to new markets of providers? Um, and can there also be more flexibility in the protocol to allow SPs to better serve retrievals? Um, these are some questions that came out from the crowd in our track yesterday. And lastly, onboarding new users to Filecoin is still challenging due to a steep learning curve, but we're hoping to improve that with resources and maybe some AI stuff coming in next week. All right, some next steps. Um, attend storage focus and comms from road mapping session to um, bring in some of the insights from the users track there, um, and then work on defining builders essentials, um, UX, DX, and create more resources there. And you guys can follow Phil Builders on Twitter for the latest updates. Awesome. Um, we unfortunately are missing a Tom for Falcon incentive structures. So coming soon, we'll, we'll give an async recap for everyone to enjoy an update. Um, and I'll give a quick update on the Falcon community road mapping session. Um, we had two um, out of our, our three sessions that happened. We had a great talk by Juan on Filecoin opportunities challenges, really ran through the entire um, challenge set around getting Filecoin to PMF, um, definitely still missing visibility into kind of critical parts of the user client onboarding pipelines. Um, and we also need to create more alignment on um, the dashboards and visibility that we are using to um, understand the client onboarding process. So that's a key takeaway for um, tomorrow. Um, we also had a community road mapping data gathering session where we dropped a lot of key upgrades that are happening soon um, into the track. Uh, lots of new cost savings shipping in NV23 um, and shipping already live in Curio and other places. Um, lots of on-chain activity improvements also going live now, which is really exciting. Um, learnings and takeaways, uh, we need the client deal pipeline and service tiers to be visible to the network, um, not things that are happening uh, pairwise between clients and storage providers or invisible to systems like Spark that are doing retrieval checking or to the network as a whole, um, understanding how the, the resources of the network are being used. Um, so we need more visibility there. Um, it's also really awesome to see that uh, L2s are excited about accelerating on-chain paid deals, thinking about things like uh, um, token swaps or L2s that are incentivizing activity that's happening on L1. Um, so that was a, a cool comment from Stefan. Um, generally, meta point, um, just we're about to go into a retro. Um, something like a road mapping track is awesome, we, but running it at, in parallel with other tracks is difficult um, from a people trying to be in many places at the same time sort of perspective. Um, and so we need to harness our opening and closing more to do more sorts of um, you know, big picture, alignment content, keynotes, um, you know, bigger picture, getting folks on the same page um, so that everyone can benefit from, uh, say, Juan's alignment talk and not just the people who are able to attend the road mapping track in parallel with everything else. Um, also, a, a learning and takeaway, we're not actually that far from hitting um, major data storage targets in terms of the amount of new client data we're bringing into the, the ecosystem. We have the storage capacity. Um, groups like Ramo are bringing even more scalability and new capabilities there. We really just need to um, scale up on the client onboarding side. Um, and it's not, it's not insane amounts of data. It's, it's uh, targets that we have hit in the past and we can hit if we know we can do it. 
Um, in terms of next steps and follow-ups, um, there's going to be an unconf tomorrow. We need to set the time um, to define and build the graph on the probabilistic distribution of uh, good, accurate deal-making clients so that we can no longer debate this and, you know, um, talk about it as an ecosystem and be like, great, you know, that's that's the area that we can have confidence over and we can see it growing over time um, and and kind of put that that conversation to bed. Um, we also need to come to a, a, you know, an alignment. So if you have opinions about that, we would love you to attend um, that session. It'll probably be in the morning tomorrow um, because we need multiple different perspectives to make sure that we're unifying them all into the one graph to rule them all and that we can then uh, stop debating about it and, and wasting mental cycles on it as a community. Um, we also need a public dashboard of paid deals. Um, deal payments aren't something that's visible. We need to get that up on somewhere like Starboard um, or Nexus so that we can be tracking how deal payments are scaling and getting some cool leaderboards around here. Um, super cool to learn that Secured Finance is going to jump in and build a fill-backed stablecoin. Super exciting. Um, I'm very excited about that. Um, and so I think uh, definitely an opportunity to also get input from storage providers. There is a channel now in Phil Slack, fill-stable-coins. You can join it. You can give your perspective on um, if we have a USD um, pegged stable coin, or if we have a basket of hardware pegged stable coin or something else, um, what, what, what is the market going to most value in terms of something you can denominate um, deal prices in reliably for multiple years? Um, we also have an unconf happening tomorrow on um, uh, breaking down the, the the client markets for Filecoin between Web 2, Web 3, CDNs, et cetera, um, and kind of what is our grading ourselves on what is our state now versus what is our predicted state in Q4 of this year, so six months-ish from now, um, so that we can get visibility into which of those areas um, we really need to be, you know, circling on and focusing on together as a group. Um, also, there's a, a key takeaway from the gaps in the community roadmap slide. We, um, we have a, a key need around more teams focusing on large-scale client onboarding and client sales um, that can augment the work that Phil Store is doing here to bring more clients into the funnel for groups like Ramo and Akave and, and all of these different folks. So um, if you are um, working in this area, time to, time to beef off up and we'd love to, to chat more about it. Um, we also have some of these that we really need to find owners for. Um, and so we're going to, I think, have, have to have some time uh, workshopping tomorrow, um, figuring out who can be responsible for finding responsible people in these areas um, and, uh, and making sure that, that some of these community gaps get solved. Um, and then our goal is to synthesize our document and then present it at the next NTRES gathering so that we can have a cohesive upgrade roadmap with some really exciting items on it, thanks to all of everyone's synthesis work. So thank you. Marta. This is not the end. We have another day. You all asked for it last time, so we are doing it. This time on the seventh floor, uh, we have four rooms. The hacking uh, room will be in, uh, I think it's called Salon One slash Executive Lounge. Uh, it will have comfy chairs and things like that, so it's more kind of a chill out zone. Um, and then we have the Salon Two, Three, and Four, uh, Two, Four, and Five. Uh, so far, we have two demos. Uh, one of them will be remote. Uh, one of them will be in person, I hope. Uh, we have the network version 23 calibration upgrade uh, for two hours at around noon. Mm, and uh, follow-up discussions, uh, state and the future of uh, Filecoin Builders Funnel, uh, and the ones that Molly already mentioned and a couple of other discussions. If you want to make sure that you're, even if it's three-person session, it's a good way to make sure that kind of we are coordinated and have time slots allocated and so on, pop it into the uh, sheet and that's it. Thank you. Awesome. I know I'm standing between people and drinks, so I'm going to go fast as I can. Um, first, a huge thank you to all of our track leads for running your tracks. You guys are phenomenal. 
Um, as a reminder, if you have insights, knowledge, please share your learnings more broadly in the appropriate Slack channel or in Phil Dev Summit. Um, and make sure that if you had documents or takeaways or other things, that links end up in there, um, and along with passwords if you need passwords, so that um, people who attended can view. Um, we also are collecting your photos. There's a QR code for it. There's a link in this um, as well. If you have any photos that you took over the course of this event, share your photos. That is also where you can go and find the beautiful picture of all of us standing on the stairs from many different angles um, that you can then tweet to your friends. So um, continue onwards. Um, we're also going to be getting these recordings out. As a reminder, we will default publish recordings, so make sure that you've coordinated with the video team proactively. If you don't want your content automatically published to YouTube, we're going to edit it all up, and it should go out kind of Monday, Tuesday um, next week, and then we'll start tweeting about it. So um, make sure that you've you've gotten your updates there. Um, these act get non-trivial amounts of views. I think you know we often get hundreds, 200, 300 people viewing a rant. This track is going to get 300 views. I'm like. Thanks, folks. Um, I hope you're having a great time viewing us. Uh, so de definitely make sure you watch and share the recordings. Um, we're going to now do a lightning fast retro. Um, maybe we'll just popcorn super quickly. Um, generally, I have everyone type some thoughts into this, and we vote, and we do other things. I know it's fast. Um, can we maybe spend like five minutes on this? Because your feedback is really useful. This is how we iterate. And I know that this is a good thing to then give feedback on. It's like you're standing between me and beer. Don't do that. We're going to spend five minutes. We're not going to discuss. Just put your items, um, and then we'll, we'll run off to the end of things. I'm going to do it with you. So Everyone else can just keep going while I finish through our big round of thank yous, though you're going to have to clap. Um, first, a huge thank you to all of our different speakers. We had a ton of different speakers. <laughs> and track leads, and workshop leads, and demoers, and all of these wonderful humans. Um, Y'all are the best. Um, huge thank you again to our track leads. Really, you guys put in the vast majority of, of work and prep and cat herding and all the things, so huge thank you. <laughs> huge thank you to our sponsors who helped pay for this venue for all of our breakfasts and lunch and um, the happy hour we're about to go to. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and a thank you to our event organizers who helped cat herd the track leads and uh, coordinate and make tons of decisions to actually get this event to actually happen. <laughs> Woohoo! Um, and last but not least, thank you so much to our AV logistics venue staff, all of the people behind the scenes who made all of this happen. Awesome. Okay. Reminders, share your photos and videos. If you didn't already pick up a screen printed thing, definitely do so. Um, and now, thank you all. This is our goodbye. We are going to head off to the FDS and D-Pin Day happy hour at the Delirium Tap House. Um, if you didn't register already, make sure you register and get some drink tokens. Um, and then we'll, we'll go drink some beer and talk about all of our next steps and all the things we're going to workshop tomorrow morning. Thank you all.